Off ni yang video Kalau video Ya, orang kata yang berapa video kan
Hello. Is it audible? Yes. Yeah, I hope uh, is it audible. Okay, uh, kindly yeah. mute your video as well as kindly mute your. Uh, இந்த முழு நாடும் கொரோனா வைரஸ் அல்லது நம்ம அவரு தெரிய மாட்டேங்குது பாரு சார் நீங்க லைவ் பண்ணிட்டீங்களா சார் hello is it audible hello i hope uh, it is audible okay uh, we can start the session uh, kindly mute your video as well as kindly mute your uh, microphone too if you have any doubts uh, note it down at the end of the session you can uh, ask the questions uh, professor is ready so he will start the session uh, i think um, uh, professor anand lakshmi is here ma'am are you here Uh, professor are you here uh i might be joined hello hello are you hearing me uh, yeah, yeah 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 yes sir yes yes i i'm already joined yeah yeah okay uh fine i yeah sir you can i think uh, professor anand lakshmi you are here uh 
not sure. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> so kindly okay, maybe. mute your audios and if possible, please uh, also mute your video. So no disturbances arises due to network issues. Uh, I think I, 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 we can still wait for another Lakshmi as uh, she is the organizer. Uh, Professor Ananta Lakshmi, you are here. I see Niyas from Secretary College is already here. Uh, Niyas, sir, do you have any idea about? Yes, Vijay. Yes, uh, we are waiting for Ananta Lakshmi. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Yep. Hello. Uh, Vijay sir, yes. hello is it audible sir, Vijay sir? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm clearly getting you. Okay, fine sir. Uh, Professor Ananth Lakshmi, I have some internet issue. So, uh, okay. uh, phone la connect panirke. so we will speak uh, and then we can start. Yeah, yeah. Ma'am, you can start, panunga, ma please. Okay, uh, very good afternoon to all. To the webinar, I would love to welcome all the learning professors connected to the uh, SPP online by the Department of Craig and Street, Sagan College, Silver Third, in association with the Open Foundation. I take this opportunity to thank our principal, Dr. K. Maria Anthony Raj, for encouraging to conduct this webinar and extend my special thanks to the Department of HRE, Professor Yeti Gomati, for her excellent support for the conduct of this program. So now, let me to introduce our speaker, Dr. Sri Shiskar Ashokan, the researcher in the Department of Chemistry and Chemical Engineering, Charles Mayor of Technology, Sweden. Actually, he was uh, working in four international universities, different universities, uh, University of Bergen and University of Oslo in Norway, and Sri uh, uh, University in China, and Chancellor University in Sweden. And uh, he has a strong uh, uh, collaboration with the uh, Coimbra Institute of Technology, BSC Tech uh, and Madhuri College University, and even Madras University in Chennai. And also, he has a collaboration with Andy University in UK. His uh, main research focus is on material characterization, especially using advanced telephone microscopy. He completed his PhD from the uh, University of Berlin in Norway. His uh, prime focus in his PhD research period was about phase transformation and chemical modification on nanocarbon particles. He obtained his uh, bachelor's degree in specialization of a master's degree with the specialization in material science from PhD College of uh, Technology. 
technology. He has very good uh, research experience. Uh, he had a uh, research experience at Indira Gandhi Atomic Research Center, Kalpaka, as well as the Indian Institute of Science during his master's career. So far, uh, he has published uh, 23 pure meteorological high standard publications reviewed Nature uh, American Chemical Society, Royal Chemical Society, the Retriever and Future on Research Topics, including Form and Nanotube, Two Dimensional. I think we lost the connection there. Surinder sir, are you here? Hello, sir, in there, sir. Which is sir, we can see. Yeah, uh, I I thought uh, there was a problem with the connection. I don't know. Uh, for him. Ah, hello. So, line there, come on. Yaro da voice ke kele. Hello. Hello. Okay, live stream there. Okay. Uh, okay. Screen there is liya. Yeah, okay, okay. So Nias is here. I, I will talk. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. So Nias, sir, screen the read then, eh? No. I have shared my PPT screen. Varla, Vijay. Uh, I will I, I will restart again. Unga say ning operate panna try panna. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm trying again. Just a minute. Okay, va. Yes, sir. Okay, working, la. Ah, clear, clear, clear. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good afternoon to all. I uh, hope everyone is hearing and sharing. I have shared my screen, so everyone must be uh, visible to us, yes, right, or, or clear with the view. Okay, va. Yes. And thanks for uh, like inviting me. Uh, I really thankful to Secretary College. Uh, there are good friends from Secretary College Microbiology uh, Biochemistry Department, uh, including Dr. Nias. Thanks again for uh, inviting me now with the uh, Secretary College. 
Yeah, we are connecting through webinar. Of course, it's uh, like new uh, technological driven academic uh, things nowadays due to the corona outbreak. Hope everyone is safe and doing good and safe at home. I wish we recover soon. So with this, today's presentation, I would look to, like to share certain things like in how the international research environment goes on with more interdisciplinary in nature in all the departments. I, I, I cannot frame this to any single department. It's more or less, as I am working more in international, of course, uh, it's now four different universities, including in Norway, China, and Sweden now. So we are working very closely, but more interdisciplinary. So I, I say very closely because we are working uh, like in a, take a particular research questions, broad interdisciplinary nature. We include every point of research aspects, like include different technological things, include different simulations, include different applications. So in that way, we are having more opportunity to work in an international environment covering most of the departments, I can say. In Chalmers, we are working in Department of Chemistry and Chemical Engineering, mostly with corrosion nowadays uh, within the department. But uh, our group is more specific to renewable energy industry and energy policy, I can say. So we are more working more closely with metallurgical industries and energy industries and the corrosion uh, research groups of our own Sweden and within Europe. So now we, we have wide opportunities to work in Europe because of the EU policies opened up. So we don't have any restriction to work uh, within the specific limit of boundary or geography. So we have very open environment nowadays in Europe. We have a new uh, framework which gives possibilities, funding opportunities, and even uh, more uh, opportunity to use all the laboratories uh, without any restriction, no matter where you are working and where you are aligning. So we are we are opening up all the uh, all the traditional boundaries or orthodox boundaries in the sense I can say. So that's why I chosen these topics. So understanding interdisciplinary and international approaches. With this. I, I just pick few lines. I don't want to take a very broad uh, line. I want to pick very few lines to introduce what are the interdisciplinary works going on around the world. So it's like just a eye opener to all the researchers and professors. I see uh, there are many young professors are here. And of course, I, I see very um, a senior professors, really thankful for you, senior professors joining here with this um, for a use, useful communication here. So with this, I will keep on moving. Uh, to my slides. So as we speak interdisciplinary, we know from the beginning or from our uh, approach of Indian universities, if you take physics, yes, we have broad opportunity in working in nuclear engineer as a biophysicist or aerospace or high science school teacher or even a ballistic expert, astronomer or research physicist, or even the material scientist like me. When coming back to chemistry major, yeah, there is again possibility as a material scientist or research chemist or biochemist or microbiology or medical lab technicians, environmental consultant in again in nuclear engineer. So these are the traditional science subjects what we are dealing. And of course, in past few uh, tens of years, we have also introduced uh, biochemistry. It's again, uh, it's a it's a link between the biology and chemistry. Even the physicians are uh, working now in biochemistry, major research, pharmacist, and food scientist, uh, so on. So in Sweden, we have another area, including biochemistry, but extending to uh, biophysics. There are uh, more biophysics department in almost all the universities. I'm not sure whether uh, we have in Indian universities if this new courses or new department is introduced at least. Uh, most probably there are maybe a way to go, but still must be introduced as quick as possible, I can recommend. So in uh, Stockholm University, there's a department of biochemistry and biophysics uh, where they have even courses, which is, I just pick 
few interesting questions that are suited for my background, for example, the physics of biomedical microscopy. I'm an electron microscopist working in material science, but as an electron microscopy, I have a broad opportunity to work in most uh, biological materials or medical uh, things or biomaterials, including uh, uh, nanoparticles towards the bio applications like that. So I picked this uh, syllabus, which is more uh, relevant to me and it's more uh, interdisciplinary in nature. With this uh, syllabus, they in introduce optics, which is, I can say, more uh, related to uh, what 10th, 11th, and 12th physics book uh, deal with in our syllabus, even in CBSE or state board. Uh, there are very good uh, optical lessons, uh, introduced microscopy. Even uh, this biomedical microscopy uh, syllabus carry over that one uh, in addition to uh, in the little advanced one like fluorescence microscopy or Raman microscopy, uh, such things. So biomedical microscopy within the biophysics deals with all the optics lessons. So this is one uh, way of uh, dealing uh, interdisciplinary and another one, uh, experimental methods in molecular bio where they are uh, dealing with more material characterization as a material scientist or material uh, researcher I, I can uh, almost all these characterization tools we are nowadays using in all type of material irrespective of whether metal or biomolecules or uh, physics uh, physical uh, things or chemical things and we are also entering into extra crystallography toward introducing towards the biomolecules or molecular uh, things so these are the characterization uh, things which are introduced for all the all the bio applications, including electromagnetic radiation behavior or thermodynamic nature of biomolecules, uh, how it behaves in that and all these things. So this is another interesting subject which is introduced within biophysics and even quantum biology. Uh, it deals with more uh, quantum mechanical things of bioparticles. In, in it, it covers the electronic spectra of photosynthetic complexes. It also covers femtosecond spectroscopy, which is a uh, very uh, like fast way of approaching uh, the, the material and getting uh, the signals detected within few, few, few uh, microseconds or femtoseconds, I can say, uh, through laser. So these are the uh, new spectroscopies which is introduced and more particularly towards studying the biological uh, particles. And they are, they are studying the quantum uh, nature of these uh, biological particles or cells, I can say, in more uh, stressful way. Uh, they also have studied the photosynthetic energy transfer between the molecules uh, in different environment. So this quantum biology, it's link physics, uh, more related to quantum physics and biology. It's a combined one, uh, which is in University of Gothenburg, where uh, I'm living in, but uh, I'm, I'm working in Chalmers University of Technology. The University of Gothenburg is for uh, arts and science. And we are for uh, engineering university. And there is another subject which I came across, which is the rapid biophysical characterization and NMR spectroscopy, structural analysis of small proteins from bacteria and archaea. This is a research paper published in University of Gothenburg, my good friend, uh, whom I had shared my office. Of course, we share uh, same corridor for University of Gothenburg and Chalmers University for certain uh, research uh, people uh, for suffer some practical reasons so we know uh, what they are working at least when we are discussing so that's why i just want to bring it uh, to you uh, we uh, they used uh, nmr spectroscopy uh, for to get uh, more uh, more uh, research answers from bacteria and archaea uh, through spectroscopy and they used the bioinformatic tools uh, sometimes uh, they are also trying to use the deep learning and like machine learning or artificial intelligence in the next uh, sector to bring computer or integrate computer uh, knowledge or computer related mm, terminologies into this biophysics to get in more and more advanced and very quick uh, results uh, gathering many as much as possible information. So this is another uh, fantastic work going on in this biophysics field. And there is X-ray crystallography experiments, which at least I used for material science or metals or nanoparticles, but uh, really I surprised to see this such a re research paper, uh, which used uh, X-ray crystallography uh, towards uh, biophysics uh, uh, laboratory or biophysics group, uh, where they studied uh, more lipid cubic phases uh, with some micro-sized crystals. 
and, and protein structures. So this is another work uh, recently developing, uh, integrating all the material characterization tools towards the biological things. That's why it's termed as biophysics, I, I guess. So this is another uh, maybe future oriented. I don't know uh, if everyone uh, or, or all the nations are completely into this era now, but it's a needed and it may be the uh, oriented uh, aspect which cover artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, which, which gets all the data and integrated data and, and gives quick uh, reply or answers uh, towards any type of uh, diseases or any type of need uh, for a health, care, health, uh, health or affected people, uh, medically affected people, I can say. So it's, it's, it's maybe developed or it's maybe on the way uh, to get into the future uh, uh, research group uh, into the commercialized or into the people uh, normal use. Maybe it's coming on the way. At least in this type of uh, corona outbreak, we see uh, the data were collected uh, through the mobile phones like in China or I heard about those things were also covered in Korea and Taiwan. And they get all the data and they, they have some chips or something it's introduced to them. So they monitor all the uh, temperature variations or all the uh, health related issues can be monitored from uh, home to hospital without you physically going there uh, but maybe uh, it's on the way yeah so the next one is medical physics which is another uh, well-known department or well-known research group uh, in, within indian universities uh, there are more medical physics applications we are now started to use in most hospitals, even though uh, I'm not sure whether it is that th th there are more uh, open area in research field, but at least in the commercial field, it is, uh, of course, it's it's derived uh, through the root. Like in medical physics, we can say it's X-ray is a well-known uh, terminology which used in medical physics. And there is imaging like from X-ray computer tomography or MRI, MRA or PET scan, which is more related to physics, but application towards the medical. So uh, this image, which shows uh, what's the need of medical physics or what are the development which comes across medical physics in this modern era, starting from X-ray to PET scan, like from the two dimensional approach to the three dimensional approach. MRI use the magnetic resonance imaging, uh, like some unstable atomic nuclei always have uh, produce radio frequency signals. These signals are observed and monitored or detected and imaged processed later on in MRI. And MRA uses some contrast uh, mapping liquids. Uh, it's, it's like MRI, but MRA will give more uh, imaging towards the vessels and uh, veins. PET scan, which is this comes under nuclear medicine category uh, where the positron is used, like the radioactive tracer element is injected, maybe fluorine 18 is used nowadays. I don't know, uh, other uh, chemicals are used in India, but at least I'm sure fluorine 18 is used. That's more uh, commercially uh, usable. So those radioactive substance which goes into the target cells, which may uh, emit positron because of the unstable ligand, then those positron, which is actually an anti-electron, combined with electron from the neighboring cells, then gamma rays is emitted again. So those gamma rays were detected through the 180 degree uh, rotatable detector in all the directions. So it gives 3D mapping or 3D imaging. So this is another example for combining physics and medical, uh, like an interdisciplinary, but more commercialized, a well-known, uh, research I can see. Then there is a new uh, area which is developing with hardened therapy, or we can say proton therapy, that's anything. Uh, because the proton therapy introduced one proton and hardened hadron therapy, which is uh, a common terminology for proton and carbon ion beams. As you know, uh, the proton consists of uh, up and down uh, quarks. The hadrons are made up of a few, uh, two or more quacks. So these hadrons are used instead of X-rays 
at some point uh, for the cancer therapy at uh, I don't know, uh, by using the particle accelerator. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's uh, already been used in India, uh, but in America, there are more uh, medical uh, universities are using this, if I am not wrong, uh, as I come across some research articles. So this is uh, like uh, advantages which shows uh, than X-rays. For example, uh, X-rays can penetrate deep uh, bypassing or crossing even the affected tissues. But in hadron therapy, the target cells can be easily calculated, the distance between the source and cells, then the energy can be varied. The best thing in hadron therapy is it have, for example, uh, the Bragg peak, it means if you, if you calculate the Bragg peak where this particle or hadron have most energy, usually towards the target cells, because of this most intense energy wanting in this target cells when compared to the distance it comes from the source towards the tar target cells, it only shows a peak energy or intense energy at some point. That's a bright peak. Uh, where, and where these hadrons spend their energy and die. So it, 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 it won't exceed or it won't exceed the target cells than are going into the normal cells and affect, affect those regions as like in X-rays. So this is one of the very good advantages or the best one compared to X-ray, you can say. Uh, these are used for a tumor target uh, therapies, a radiology department nowadays. Even this uh, images so uh, how the X-rays are penetrating or how the proton beam can be stopped here within the target cells uh, in all the directions, either it is inside or from the top or here, proton beam and X-rays are behaving. So this is a proton radiation therapy, uh, which is coming into effect soon or commercialized soon. Then I go to the material science. So, so far I was like giving some perception or like few points from the biophysics and medical physics. And the material science is my subject. As a material scientist, I feel always happy because I, am, I have wide opportunity to work in interdisciplinary nature. Uh, for example, even from my masters, if I compare certain results or, or my experience where I was working, it shows how broad uh, is, inter, uh, inter, how interdisciplinary is the material science. Uh, when I was working in China, uh, I was working in school of materials and Material science and engineering. In material science and engineering school, we have 600 students, like 400 from the bachelor, 200 from masters, and nearly 150 PhD students. So it, it, it's like different separate college for material science alone. Unfortunately, or like, I don't know why it was, but when I was studying in PhD College of Technology, we have just 10 to 15 people per year always. Uh, and after PhD College of Technology is linked to an university in past 20 years, it's step by step, it was reduced and the material science department, material science course was taken out for some reason, I don't know. Uh, but the, the world have more material science department to bring in all the field experts like in bio or materials or metallurgy, or even the nano material experts uh, to, to, to to grow, to grow the system in interdisciplinary nature, to feed everyone, to feed everything in the advanced world. So the material science is one of the best interdisciplinary course, which I, at least I am admired admi towards it because of course it's personal connection because I am from material science. So it's always. So when I compare my lifestyle, how I use this material science knowledge in different field of, uh, platforms for example uh, i have i have worked in physics chemistry and engineering i did my phd in physics uh, now i am working in chemistry of course uh, as it is in energy industry it is more related to engineering and like metallurgical things we are dealing with these things is possible because of the interdisciplinary course even when i was giving lecture in chennai uh, so college 
uh, I see there are students studying physics and computer applications. But really, they were upright uh, whether it's useful in future because they are the BSc physics with computer applications. Then I said, yes, of course, the world is interdisciplinary and you have a lot of opportunity for entering into the bioinformatics group or into the uh, computer related programming for the, uh, for, for example, a uh, few of my students whom I know they are working with the electromagnetic theory. They are getting uh, results derived through for Python or MATLAB or C++ or Java. So there are wide opportunities to use both physics and uh, computer applications. And nowadays, the bioinformatics groups are developing and deep learning, machine learning things are developed. So really, you have good opportunity, but just you need to drive towards that without any hesitation. Or you need to learn more and more. Don't stop over at any point just because of the mark. That's what I used to comment them or comment comment in. So as a material scientist, again, coming back, I have such wide opportunity. I will show a few examples where I have uh, encountered different field of research questions and different platforms where I was working. Uh, I was working in Indira Gandhi uh, Research Center as a project student, uh, where I was working in fuel reprocessing plant research. Uh, I used the fuel uh, reprocessing plant. There are uh, more corrosion issues coming in. So we were developing a material. Uh, we have that scientists are developing the material. We were, as an assistant, we were working with them. We learned a lot uh, how to use uh, different materials in this reprocessing plant to get rid of corrosions. We learned nuclear physics. We learned corrosion chemistry. And of course, we, we, we learned a lot through our Indian scientists in Indira Gandhi Atomic Research Center. This is one of a uh, uh, slide which I want to show because it, it combines all the things, physics, chemistry, and materials. And next, I was moving on to uh, Hyundai Vacuum where we developed this fingerprint coating for forensic department. I was working with uh, Wacom Science. Uh, so we, we were, uh, I was in this project, we were developing uh, this one for Ireland forensic department. Uh, they need a fingerprint coating, for example, where the chemical, uh, like routine uh, fingerprint detection was not possible in some plastics or some other items like in shoes. Uh, there, there may be some problems. So they need to develop some fingerprint coating. So we used, gold and zinc uh, coater. Uh, this is, I don't know which one is my hand uh, or this because it's it's take, took before 14 years. So even I just put my hand and get coated uh, through gold and zinc. So we know uh, the gold is getting coated over all the surfaces. Uh, it affects the quality of ridges and uh, the, like tops and downs. The zinc, it's one usually uh, sits in the ridges, so it gives contrast mapping, uh, like negative staining, uh, like ups and downs with black and white. So that's why uh, it's easily detectable. Uh, it works irrespective of nature. So when regular routine fingerprint detection is failure, uh, these type of machines can be helpful. And of course, you need physics knowledge. Uh, this one, like in a vacuum science, uh, then you know why we are using like, so nowadays they are using zinc oxide instead of zinc and uh, gold. Mm, someone using silver nanoparticles for coating here uh, after zinc coating to get enhancement of uh, color. So these are the things which used nowadays. Then I move on to uh, nanocarbon production uh, where I was concentrating more on nanocarbon uh, towards energy applications. but. The company which I was associated when while I was doing PhD, uh, they synthesis nanocarbon from methane. So the methane extraction, then the methane uh, pyrolysis, where we get carbon and hydrogen. The hydrogen can be used in future towards electricity applications, even in chemical industry to produce ammonia and carbon industry again to wide, uh, wide classified uh, area of researchers. Uh, I'm more uh, stick to carbon in my future slides. So these are the another option where the material science can, uh, material scientist can work. So coming to nano and interdisciplinary field. So far we are studying about or, or talking about the field uh, which we are well known or with the departments well known like biochemistry, biophysics and material science. Of course, we are using nano in all the departments nowadays either it is microbiology or biochemistry or material science, uh, we are using nano. So the nano itself is an interdisciplinary field. 
we need to develop more nano related courses in future uh, nano related departments uh, i see there are a few universities offering nanotechnology from the integrated courses like from bsc to combining msc like a five year course and there are uh, nanotechnology courses in even engineering and technology colleges it's a very good thing, but we need to develop more and more uh, towards application-driven uh, researchers uh, instead of theoretical things. So uh, as a nanoscience, I just want to give a few crisp over it, uh, like nanoscience is study of structures and materials on the scale of nanometers. As uh, as well. as well. OK, yeah. So the nanotechnology is a technology involving the design, production, characterization, and applications of nanostructured materials because the nanotechnology again can be a broad uh, in interdisciplinary nature can be applicable towards medicine biology even in agriculture or industry or environmental things uh, for example uh, one of my friends was working with titanium carbide uh, two dimensional material but they are used for nan environmental applications uh, even the carbon nanotubes have more agriculture and environmental applications uh, carbon nanotubes have medicine and biological applications of course again carbon nanotube can be used in industrial applications uh, where uh, the transistor can be developed or mol molybdenum disulfide two-dimensional a single layer uh, with a single catalyst elements introduced or single dopant element introduced can be used in uh, there are more purification uh, routines uh, like in oil industries so the, the, the development of nanotechnology with low dimensional materials have wide possibility because of the quantum uh, field or quantum confinement effect which we'll see a few examples over in the next slides this is one example how this nanomaterials used in different field of applications uh, for example if you see uh, a this is the dna and nanowire which is created and used as a computing device as well as scaffolds to generate highly organized and complex superstructures Carbon nanotubes can be used in wide applications. We will see a few examples later on. Of course, carbon nanotubes and graphene uh, as the highest mechanical strength, enormous intrinsic movement, and zero effective mass. And an electron can travel for micrometers evading scattering at room temperature. So the D is metal catalyst nanowires can be used to connect two chips by growing them in shape of vertical bridges. So then the molecular switching, then the oxygen depleted titanium dioxide memory stress so nowadays these oxygen depleted uh, titanium dioxide memory stress are also used in uh, neuromorphing uh, technologies uh, they are integrating uh, biological applications to it or so bioinformatics knowledge uh, deriving uh, or using uh, these things and there are some nano antennas uh, and nanoscale carbon nanotube radios of course in carbon nanotube i can say even we are or like Industries, electron microscopy industries are trying to use nanowires and carbon nanotubes as an electron source instead of a traditional tungsten and uh, lanthanum borate filaments. Uh, so they are trying to use these nanotypes to so get more and more uh, electron uh, beam with more intense nature. So these these slides just I want to bring in to show how these nanoscale devices are useful in different applications. So. Yeah, of course. Now, as I told you, this nanoscience are now combined with machine learning, uh, like getting experimental design and materials from the nanoscience knowledge and integrating into machine knowledge uh, to derive more uh, quick uh, results and like maybe combining with artificial intelligent uh, neural networks for biological applications and, and in optical experiments like in our electron microscope, we are also trying to incorporate uh, this machine knowledge uh, machine learning uh, knowledge uh, to get more derive more and more uh, in in insight knowledge uh, to fi to fix the electron uh, beam or electron um, pathways uh, within the well controlled uh, environment so our groups are even working with this combining optics and i have heard biological people are using this one so machine learning or the computer related things are incorporating our into all all physics chemistry and biological in future this is one example i want to show you for example uh, this is just because of i am from the electron microscopy background and these are the imaging uh, so these image sets uh, can be data processed 
by using machine learning, then with a defined algorithm, the images can image output can be enhanced to get more insight. Uh, I'll show you one example slide, uh, which is a traditional way of getting uh, blood tissues or thyroid gland tissues uh, through conventional microscopes. This is the malaria infected human blood. Uh, there are iSmart software introduced to the optical column to get uh, enhanced results. And in next stage, there are also some algorithm or programming uh, is introduced to get more uh, insight into these uh, cells or blood cells to get more results or more information. So within optical uh, imaging, uh, like as I am related to here, I'm showing this example. So within optical imaging, we are also uh, using such algorithms. Uh, nowadays, the Python uh, is completely interlinked even towards electron microscopy to get more uh, image processing data. Yeah, th this example, this slide is towards optical image. Of course, we have good slides from electron microscopy, which I cannot show you because of uh, restriction. So that's why I just brought another uh, optical microscope image comparing how uh, the optics and algorithm is used. I will go to the carbon nanotubes. It's an interdisciplinary uh, example. The carbon nanotubes, as you know, is an allotropes of carbon. Uh, these are the cylindrical carbon mole molecules. Uh, it's like a single graphene uh, layer is folded in, like in a single layer or in a double or multi-layer to bring into carbon nanotube structure. Yes. So carbon nanotubes, if I take only biomedical applications, it can be used in a therapy, like in a drug delivery system, or like in a tissue engineering or in biomimetic implants, then thermal and photodynamic therapy. Like Coming back to my field of imaging alone, I restrict here. My restrict here my talk towards imaging. I will just show a few examples how these carbon nanotubes are used in uh, biological imaging purposes using uh, like fluorescence microscopy or in Raman microscopy. So I'm more closely working with carbon nanotubes in my PhD, where we are used to functionalize a lot. Uh, the functionalization of carbon nanotubes tube itself is, a, or carbon nanostructure itself is a different, uh, like a broad uh, research area because it's more uh, like with different functionalized elements or functionalized components, you can introduce uh, more and more different applications. Uh, that's right. uh, functionalization itself is really a broad area where we were working. Uh, I was even working functionalization of carbon nanostructures using organic molecules. Here they have used DNA as a functionalization uh, source for carbon nanotubes. They grow gold nanoseeds. Uh, because of the fluorescence effect, uh, they get enhanced uh, luminescence, or uh, sorry, fluorescence. Here they used for uh, like uh, some blood, uh, blood cells, or like here it is named, yeah, FA labeled KB cells. So these cells uh, are imaged using carbon nanotube effect using fluorescence microscopy. Uh, the carbon nanotube have uh, advantages over getting into like different level of penetration. Uh, so it, it, it gets all the information from everywhere uh, without any boundary, boundary restriction. So that's why they're using uh, nanotubes. As a microscopist, I see the, like scanning electron microscopes and transmission electron microscope, which clearly shows how the nanotubes are, are or bundled with DNA and gold nanoseeds have developed over it. So another uh, example of uh, NIR imaging using carbon nanotubes, uh, they just try to capture uh, video images uh, in a mouse and pointed out different regions using the imaging. Uh, like they used, they injected polyethylene glycolated uh, single wall nanotubes because single wall nanotubes have more uh, fluorescence effect also within this NIR2 uh, boundary regions from 900 to 1200 uh, wavelength um, yeah, window. So that's the second uh, window compared to the primary window, which is 400 to 700 nanometer. So the, the, it's it's more helpful in getting an IR2 imaging window here using carbon nanotubes. That's mostly with single wall carbon nanotube. So they used nano towards biological applications. But there are 
different imaging applications using Raman or fluorescence or photoacoustic. Of course, I'm not uh, good in photoacoustic imaging tumors. So I, I'm not, I just brought it how this carbon nanotubes used in different applications. I'm not uh, good in explaining these things uh, because they are used in PET imaging. Uh, for example, they deliver a drug using carbon nanotubes uh, that get into the PET imaging later on. So nano and bio and interdisciplinary. These are my papers, which I want to show you. Uh, like just four papers, which I was used as a material science uh, or published uh, as a material scientist, uh, helping the biological people or biomedical people uh, getting published using by uh, electron microscopy knowledge. So I just provide them electron microscopy image. Uh, for example, this paper is published in CIT, uh, PhD student Gayatri. Uh, she used magnesium incorporated hydroxy epitate. Uh, I just helped her in imaging these things uh, using uh, advanced electron microscopy. And this is uh, a collaborative paper from Pondicherry University where they have zinc selenide and zinc sulfur coarse nanorods. Uh, selenide is in core and sulfur is in shell. So I have. I was working in China where I was working in electron microscopy group where we have chemistry stem technology, advanced electron microscopy where we can even uh, get EDS mapping for such a very small 10 nanometer or five nanometer scale of uh, nanorods or nanoparticles. So I have used my knowledge uh, to provide a solution or bring insight into what these nanorods contain, uh, whether it is core shell or just ordinary nanorods using chemistry stem EDS mapping. Then they have used it for bioimaging later on for uh, HEK293 and HELA shells. So these things which we work together uh, from material science to the bioimaging. And this is another paper we published uh, together with Fancy University where they used uh, waste tea leaves as biosurfactant in synthesis, cadmium sulfide quantum dots. They used it for, uh, they study the cytotoxicity effect in bread cancer cells. I have Use my TM knowledge to get this image and get uh, the quantum dots mapped here, uh, which is around five nanometer. And then they used it for, of course, they used for bio application later on. My part is uh, end here with electron microscopy knowledge. This is another paper uh, which I'm working with SRM University. It's, it's manuscript work is finished and it's you know, submitted to some journal where they have zinc oxide and silicon dioxide coarse nano structures. Uh, they loaded with curcumin as a, like a drug delivery system, and they have also used for bioimaging. So, curcumin loaded coarse zinc oxide, uh, silicon dioxide nanostructures for bio applications. But this image uh, shows only coarse shell uh, zinc oxide and silicon dioxide. So, I have used uh, it's my image. I have used electron microscopy for them uh, to get this image for further. Uh, research work. They've used it for different biological applications. Maybe they, they publish one by one with different applications later on. So these are the things uh, we work uh, closely and interdisciplinary in nature, uh, irrespective of where we are. Uh, so there's a broad opportunity for us a material scientist, as I can say. And coming back to the international collaboration possibilities and direction, yes, uh, I, I, I tell you an example. When I was working in China, every Chinese department, every Chinese professor have linked to the like international universities through a Chinese. So it means it's no matter where the Chinese professors or researchers are working in this world, but they are again connected to their own university or partner universities in China, provide international knowledge to the Chinese students. So it's like I felt the Chinese are very best example of getting the internationally uh, international network through their own uh, Chinese people. I cannot say I cannot say uh, the Indians are not good in that, but I can say Chinese are every Chinese have their such a mentality uh, who are going outside of China, getting back to their own country and getting into the more collaboration. Uh, so I was really amazed by how they are structured uh, mentally uh, or prepared mentally uh, to come back to their, you know, uh, come back to their homeland or associated uh, by somehow 
and I can say every department have their own international collaboration. Every department have every professor have international collaboration. If you see Chinese paper, whether it is published in Nature or any other top journals, you see five different universities, but everyone come from China, like Chinese people, Chinese origin. So this this is the mentality we should develop as an Indian. Uh, of course, we are ready for open uh, like into coming back to India or giving more of our international knowledge to our Indian students uh, to get into more international collaborations. Of course, you might have seen few papers. That's why I want to uh, wanted to bring those papers. When I was even doing PhD in Norway, I brought University of Bergen in close collaboration with University of Coimbatore uh, Institute of Technology because I just bridged them. Uh, now it's like seven years of fantastic research work was going on. Every PhD student in physics department of CAT uh, is having getting chance for three months of uh, Norway research, uh, coming to Norway and do research. Yeah, like within the PhD framework or within the PhD period, they at least they come for four or five times. Uh, such a br broad possibilities are opened up. Uh, of course, uh, I was uh, I, I was one among them who made a bridge. Even when I was in China, I just uh, made a MOU uh, with Chinese University with CAT. Uh, we, we, we are working towards that. Of course, I want more international Indian researchers should come forward you know, to make such uh, possibilities. Even we have recently submitted few uh, collaborative uh, research papers and even collaborative pro project proposals in IIT Spark, uh, which is very good uh, starting point. I can say as you might have known at least. Senior professors might have known, known about that IIT Spark collaborations uh, for getting fund for Indian research to do uh, in foreign land or foreign universities. So that's a one uh, like open. But there are of course there are more international project uh, collaboration proposals are coming in every year, every month. There are more Indo-Sweden collaboration papers, uh, project proposals, or, uh, or calls are coming in using DST and Swedish research. And I see there are more uh, Norwegian and Indian uh, project funds are circulating everywhere around Indian universities. It's a good sign of uh, development, but we need to develop more. Uh, of course, I'm open in uh, like giving a direction or show show my experience how to do or how to approach these things. Uh, I'm more open in, uh, uh, even not in not only in this talk. You can even approach me later on. Uh, we can at least see. I, I don't know. I cannot promise you whether we can collaborate together, but at least I can show you uh, or explain uh, my experience uh, how to do this. So with this, uh, even I'm open for questions now regarding this. Uh, if you have more questions later to this, we are re really uh, happy to answer you, and we can have more discussion over it. Uh, with this, I'm. Thank you for your kind attention. Uh, really, uh, I'm not answer any question. OK. Uh, thank you, Professor. It was a wonderful presentation. And uh, you're looking for collaborations. It was really nice. And this is time for questions. If you have any questions, kindly post in a chat box. Or you can ask the questions here. If you have any questions, kindly unmute your uh, microphone and then speak. If you are facing okay. any trouble, kindly post your question in a chat box so that we can uh, ask the question to professor. He can answer. Hello, Vijay. Yeah, hi. Yeah, hello. Uh, it's not a question. Uh, actually, I, I've been associated with you a long time. I mm -hmm. feel very happy to be hearing the presentation. It was a highly uh, physics, chemistry, and biology perspective, along with the uh, machine learning perspective also. It was a nice presentation. Um, um, it was a nice, uh, what are the various collaborative perspective on the Indian student project. We will try in level best in future. We'll do some mm -hmm. collaboration along with uh, your ideas. Uh, thanks mm -hmm. for your uh, highly motivated presentation. 
uh, I, i know personally you are highly committed with various research works and uh, recently you published some good papers i seen you in the fb uh, yeah, not yeah. only in research uh, and social work also you are doing some good uh, thing in the during in the covid 19 crisis uh, along in, in in your busy schedule uh, you give some time for our uh, department for giving guest, guest lecture it was highly informative to us uh, thanks for uh, your uh, good presentation yeah, thank you nias thank you hello yeah coming here hello sound kind of disturbing hello sound disturbing hey sound what is it hello yeah yeah can you please sound correct like hello 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 மேம் உங்களோட இந்த பேக்ரவுண்ட் நாய்ஸ வந்து கொஞ்சம் கம்மி பண்ணிட்டு பேசுனீங்கன்னா நல்லா இருக்கும் மேம் பேக்ரவுண்ட் ஆடியோ ஏதோ பிளே ஆயிட்டு இருக்கு அதை கொஞ்சம் கம்மி பண்ணிட்டு பேசுங்க சொல்லுங்க எனக்கு கேக்குது கிளியரா இருக்கு நீங்க சொல்லுங்க பேசுங்க thank you so much sir for your wonderful and uh, motivated uh, presentation mm-hmm. and also your uh, immediate acceptance and uh, on behalf of the management and also the department of biochemistry once again i thank you sir yeah yes, hello Uh, good afternoon sir this is uh, srinandini from kaidamelath government college chennai yeah, uh, yeah. sir i just uh, uh, i'm basically from a zoology person so mm-hmm. being a zoology person how can i have a collaborative project with the uh, physics uh, department sir in what aspects i can have a collaborative project no uh, uh, any collaboration starts from the, the, like department to department approach uh, okay. i can i can give you first general thing then uh, you can uh proceed with more specific an- question and answer we can uh, have communication later on okay sir how we started uh, like cit and university of bergen is we started with like mou within the department uh, of uh, like in uh, physics department of university of bergen because every department in foreign university have the chance to get mou with any universities or any department around the world so we started mou with uh, physics department of university of bergen and cit then later on publish few papers together because for any international calls uh, they ask whether you have already worked together or at least a similar platform so in an interdisciplinary way for example you are in geology and if you want to collaborate with physics department at least those department research uh, works and your department research work should be uh, published together uh, before getting into the inter call uh, get selected i can say that's my experience at least Okay, succeeded uh, for last 6 years uh, with cit and university of bergen uh, so start with them or you or start with collaborative research papers uh, then get into uh, more in in depth uh, research work uh, we can uh, we can even have separate uh, discussion okay so thank you so much sir. thank you thanks sir. hello yeah Yeah, so, uh, is a interdisciplinary project or research or appreciable nowadays uh, sorry i'm not uh, hearing you clearly please repeat the question okay. is the interdisciplinary projects or research works are appreciable one accepted yes. one nowadays yeah 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 that's very much and uh, most of the people are uh, demotivated uh, Uh, like this uh, interdisciplinary course works no no actually uh, I, i'm actually a victim of that because i, I was from a material science uh, like i studied applied science which is a triple major and material science i got degree from indian uh, university approved approved uh, universities 
but I cannot come now because of these uh, policies, uh, because they need uh, uh, academic professor should be like uh, BS uh, or PhD. I'm more interested in the international research environment. Now, even to come back for me, it's a problem. Uh, I have very limited options like in IAD. Of course, I understand the situation uh, like this interdisciplinary is academically not uh, like at least for us, it's not a completely uh, acceptable uh, in AACT, AACT norms, but as a research uh, person, you can still have wide opportunity. No one is uh, stopping you uh, to collaborate or publish or get research fund in a in a different uh, field of work. Uh, once you are settled into like in some university as a professor, yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. thank you. Hello. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. Hello. Hello. Yeah, please, yeah, please. Yeah, please, please. Sir, good evening, sir. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I'm okay. Yes. Hello, good evening, sir. This is Aruna. Actually, voice break. I did. Hello. Yeah, yeah, voice Hello. break. At least, uh, at least try to uh, post your question so at least I can answer you if it is uh, having some network issues. Uh, now also you are, you are having problems, sir. Now I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Please, please continue now. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, thank you for your presentation. It is really uh, nice, very useful, useful presentation. I'm mm -hmm. Aruna from Axelim College. Mm -hmm. I would like to invite you for our uh, association or any seminar, uh, seminar, sir. If, if yeah, it is possible I, to attend, sir. Yeah, of course, it's, Hello? it's an open platform you're asking, but of course, we can discuss it. Uh, just as it is for the general audience, please uh, just raise questions alone. For these questions, of course, we have uh, separate communication, I can say. <laughs> sure, I'm accepting. <laughs> okay, it. sir. Let's sir, discuss it. Sorry. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. Uh, will you give uh, some more information about uh, nanoscience related to biotechnology, sir? Just a few things. No, means, uh, hello. 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 Sorry for the interference. Hello. Yeah, Niyas, sir. So long. Uh, Aruna, ma'am, I will give his details. You will utilize him, his sir. expertise. Oh, uh, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank okay, you. Okay, okay. Uh, Vijay, you go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah actually, uh, like, nanotechnology in Porto, it's we are talking, right? Uh, like, as I said, if I take only alone carbon nano, nanotubes, the carbon nanomaterial itself. It's more interdisciplinary and you can use it in all applications. Even I showed a few slides on how the nano rods are used in bioimaging. Uh, so it's like, like nano core shell particles are used in cancer therapy, even in carbon nanotubes are used in cancer therapy. It's, it has a wide opportunity. So it's very broad question. So I, I can pick a straight line from here, but uh, I don't know. Uh, there are more uh, papers which published uh, like comp uh, combined nanomaterial into the biological and medical applications, uh, we can say. Oh, okay. Sir. I can answer only in general because it's very broad, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay, sir. Thank you. Vijay, you have PPT model and video mode? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, can Any more questions so from the fellow participant? But still, uh, in the questions, you can write me a mail. Uh, I think uh, she's having some problem. Uh, I think she's having some problem. Yes, sir. 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 Any questions? 
the participants yeah i see there are many chat box uh, with uh, complimentary words thanks for that uh, thanks for your really good uh, presentation like attendance even in may 1 uh, labor day i wish you all good good luck of course uh, i'm open for any kind of discussion or communication through email or even i can just write my email here you can always contact me and i will also give my mobile phone you can contact me through uh, whatsapp whichever is convenient so hopefully everyone must have received through my chat box right uh which is sir i think uh, we can wind up it yeah is... okay anyway i have provided my mobile and uh, mail id so you can always contact me uh, yeah. for you uh, or i am here for our people i am here for our students so don't hesitate i am more open in this yeah okay thank you sir thank you vijay sir and uh, <laughs> it was nice presentation and uh, good attendance we have uh, yeah. a live streaming ஐடி வந்து எல்லாருக்கும் ஷேர் பண்ணிருக்கேன் I thank Open Space Foundation and Sacred Heart College for providing such opportunity. Thank you very much. I'm leaving. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Anandal. Thank you. Thank you, sir.